Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Tuesday, June the 20th, and these are the charts of the day. Well, a nasty day on Wall Street, and you can see they started with a gap down. They had a three-wave corrective rally back. Then they had a, a lower, lower plunge to take out the morning lows, a wedge, another plunge, another wedge, another pull back this time to hold the lows, but rallied up to resistance, couldn't get through, and fell back. Pretty much the same on the S&P. So net net, it was a nasty day on Wall Street. The tech drills weren't great either. A lot of our stocks did well, but uh, I want to show you some longs and some shorts today. First of all, Bluebird, which um, had a really strong morning. Looking at the one minute chart, you can see how it popped, pulled back, pop, and then had support right there, ran up to new highs, got up to 121. And then at the end of the day, it rolled over hard, getting that to 112 and change. That was a eight, eight and a half, nine point pullback and a nasty close, barely up on a day after being up eight points. So I um, wanted to show you that because it isn't pretty intraday. Uh, and it's not a surprise because after multiple waves up, we've gotten a one, two, three, four, five. It looks to me like we, bottom line is it's up against lateral price resistance and the top of the channel. I'm not surprised it pulled back, but this is a strong looking chart and it's gone from 35 to 121 since November. So about three and a half times value. Pretty, pretty nice 250% gain in a short period of time. 12 days to cover short. It may not be done if it can pop through today's high at some point. It may spike towards 130. Wouldn't bet the farm on it just yet. EXEL, a good day today. Followed through to yesterday's pop. We took it out above the declining top line. Lateral resistance and the 50-day moving errors. Today was a follow through. I'm looking for this stock to make a run at potentially 23 and a half, 25 zone, which is key key resistance. We'll see if we get enough volume and energy to get it up to there. There's 4.86 days to cover. The long-term chart still looks Terrific. Immunogen did great today after the f pop yesterday. It followed through today. Got up to 566, closed at 542, uh, up 51 cents, but about 24 cents off the high. Still, it was up about 10%. And the biggest volume in about six weeks traded. So either it stalls right here and backs up, or it extends immediately and gets up to that six and three quarter range, my next target. Um, IMMU, this swing trade has done very well for us. I didn't realize I had a swing on it until I looked at it again. This was uh, um, given to you on February 10th at 5.40 with targets of 7 and 9. So February when it popped out, it consolidated, ran up, pulled back again, and eventually made its way up to the 8.44 area a week ago before backing off. And today it's coming back again. The near-term target is 9 and 3 quarters. The intermediate target is 12 and a half. There's almost eight days to cover on this one. IPXL snapping back nicely the last three, four days from 13 and a quarter to today's high just under 16. There's resistance about the 17 range. We get through that. The 17, 18 range could take you to 2021. Four days to cover on that one. LABU rocketed through multiple tops today. It was trading fantastic, but of course, with the biotech and late market pullback, that pulled back. But sometimes, They'll pull back and consolidate after they break out. Then they set sail for the next level, which is 69.70. Swing trade Loxo popped out of the falling wedge. Um, didn't get enough volume and the technicals weren't great. The stock was up 290 or 4% on increasing in volume, but just not enough for me. I need to see the stock through 79 with volume and then we'll get into the mid to high 80s. 25 days to cover short, if that's still the case. Semiconductor MRAM, recent IPO came out in uh, October. It based, now it exploded in the last three weeks. You can see the pop, pullback, pop, pullback went today in the last three days, pop again up to 22 today with a close of 2190 up 190 or 9.5%. Volume was solid. Stock may have some more energy into the mid 20s. MYGN. Well, it's been up literally for almost three weeks every day except for that one inside day here. But literally, it moved from 19 and a half to 25 and three quarters. And there is mid-channel resistance right about there. So if we do get through this level, my next target is 29. 21 days to cover short. And the declining top line was taken out today. PTLA, well, the big reversal the last two days followed through nicely today. And I would suspect we get a run at the 41, 42 zone short term right there. If we get through that, I'm looking at high 40s. Nine days to cover on this one. This looks like a big leg one and two. A three could take you much higher. Sangamo, 
Yesterday broke the wedge. Today it followed through up against resistance or near it at 850.60. Got to 845 today and backed off to 820. But we get through here. I'm looking at nine three quarters, ten, three and three quarters days to cover. Good day for Supernus. Even with the biotechs pulling back, this did not. Got up to 41.50, close 41.40 up 115 or 2.86%. And this is a new closing high. As far as I can see, it's the highest level ever closed or highest level ever reached on a close, especially for Super SUPN. And I think made a nominal new high today, 41.50. So if we follow through, I'd be looking for mid 40. 44 is in a good target next. 100% stop under 37.90. There's still five days to cover on this one. And even though I'm not high on a solar group, Vive and Solar has been ballistic. I wanted to show you the base, the breakout, and, a, and two consecutive gaps here and then today. A little bit long in the tooth, perhaps. There is resistance just above here at five and a half. I would expect this to go in some sort of consolidation. But eventually, it could make it up to the seven, eight range. 16.7 days to cover on that one. A quick look at some of the box of shorts that are doing well. AZO got whacked for 11.66 today. It's just a couple percent because it's a high price stock, but it looks like if this takes out 575, we could be headed all the way down to 515.20. That could be very interesting. Stay tuned. CATM continues to drift lower. It won't even rally, and it would not surprise me if eventually this made it down to 28. Central Garden and Pet, that looks like it rolled over already, and now it's forming some sort of bear wedge. If that's taken out, look for 26. And 23. CLR among the oil stocks we do not like and are actually like for shorts. Rolled over there, formed the bear wedge there from the 42.3 range. It's dropped down to 30. Today's low 30.18, right on my target zone. So we may get a bounce, but eventually for 27 and 22 and a half targets. Gentex rolled over from a head and shoulders type pattern and formed the bear wedge. That rolled over and broke down two days ago and now it's stalled in this area, which is Kind of like maybe bear wedging. I'm looking for 17 and 16 going forward. IPHI, after the pullback to support, it bounced to resistance, but right now back down 70 cents today. And if it takes out 34 and three quarters, 35, headed for 33, 29, and even 26 and a half eventually. O'Reilly got smacked hard all the way down to 220, bounced five points, but still finished down 537. And it appears with this breakdown below those levels, may very well get this stock eventually down there to 205. Ralph Lauren in the big bear flag yet again. I don't think this is done on a downside. I'm thinking a rollover to the 60 and then 55 ranges or less may take place. Another oil company I dislike is Targa. Loved it up here, hate it in this area. Although it is at support right now and it may bounce, I'm looking for this to get down to 36. Verative pulled back a dollar ten or two and a half percent today. It's still intact in terms of the short. As you can see, this declining tops line met it yesterday, pulled back today. And they move on to 41 and three quarters. We should see 39, 35, and eventually high 20s. XEC. You can see that the one, two, three, and that may be oversold enough to get a bounce in this area, but eventually 82 and 73, four are my targets. And finally, Yelp which I told you had a rising wedge, and we have a boxer swing short on this one. It rolled over today for uh, almost 3%. Should it get under 29, I'm looking for a rollover. It takes it first to 26 and a half, eventually down at a 23 range, if, if not worse. Unless, of course, it's taken over. We shall see. But that's it, and that's the long and short of it tonight. HB out.